Today let's talk about shakers, how to shake, what types of shakers exist, how to choose the right shaker for a cocktail and also let's cover strainers as they are inseparable from shakers, in some cases literally. Why do you need to shake cocktails in the first place? Why can't you just stir it with a spoon? Well, first of all, it's cooling down and mixing the drink. Most cocktails taste better when they're cold. Secondly, aeration, that is saturating the cocktail with small air bubbles that make it lighter and bring out the flavor of the ingredients and also mask the alcohol. And the third one is dilution, which is very important when making cocktails because it also brings out the flavor. I have a whole video about cocktails without ice called Scaffa. I talk about it there. And also shaking looks cool. Generally you can shake even in a pickle jar if you wash it thoroughly, but if you want to look like a real bartender, I recommend using a proper shaker which come in three main types. Cobbler, the most common type of shaker in popular culture, consisting of a mixing glass, a lid with a built-in strainer and a cap. I use glass ones, so you can see what's happening inside, but usually shakers are made of stainless steel. The cobbler is mostly associated with classic cocktails of small volume, like martini, shaken not stirred, but generally it's not the most versatile option and it could be a bit difficult to open it after a shake, sometimes but it looks nice. Boston shaker, consisting of two cups, one of which can be made of glass, and it is usually larger in volume than the cobbler and it is a more versatile shaker. It is also handy for shaking sour cocktails, uh, they get more foam because ice travels a bigger, longer distance when you shake it. And it has a simpler design, but it requires a separate strainer, which I'll talk about later. And Parisian or French shaker, this is essentially the same as Boston Shaker, but shaped like a cobbler. I don't understand the point of this apart from aesthetics. If you happen to know scenarios where a Parisian Shaker is better suited, please share in the comments. I never use such a shaker myself and I don't even own one because I never need it. There are also sports shakers and salt shakers, but that's a topic for another video and another channel. We're not playing sports here, quite the opposite. Now how to shake a cocktail. First, add all ingredients to the shaker except for ice and carbonated drinks. I personally learned that the hard way. Common sense tells us it's better to pour the cheaper ingredients first, juices, syrups, and then at the end the expensive aged spirits. That way if you make a mistake you can just start over and the cost of the error wouldn't be as high. I usually don't worry about this too much because I like living on the edge. When a cocktail is assembled, add ice. It is done immediately before shaking so that it doesn't have time to melt and dilute the cocktail. Some bartenders put the ice first to the second tin to chill it and before starting to shake they pour out the water that has melted. But in our case it's too little time. As you can guess this won't work with a cobbler. Now to the shake itself. There are two most common mistakes. It's a sluggish shake like this. In the words of Harry Craddock, the author of Savoy Cocktail Book, shake the shaker as hard as you can, don't just rock it, you are trying to wake it up, not send it to sleep. In other words, shake as if your life depends on it, vigorously and with dedication. Another mistake is to shake back and forth in a straight line, as if you were choking a one-eyed snake. With this shake, the ice hits the opposite ends of a shaker too hard, breaking down into pieces and diluting the cocktail more than necessary. The more correct way is a circular motion, so that the ice rolls around inside the shaker like a mosh pit at a Cannibal Corpse concert. Some bartenders twist the shaker with their hands like this. Do you see it? Not just back and forth, but this motion. And then there's a three-point shake. All of these methods achieve the same thing, keeping the ice from just flying back and forth and breaking. Ooh, it's cold! <sighs> shake it the way you like it best, there's no one right way, every bartender has a different style. For example, my style is to suck the soul out of those who look me in the eye during a shake. But you do you. Let's make a classic whiskey sour. I will not go into detail on recipes today, I have a separate video about sours, you can watch it instead. 2 ounces 60 ml bourbon, 1 ounce 30 ml lemon juice, 3 quarter ounce 22 ml simple syrup and an egg white. As you know, to make the cocktail frothy, you need an egg white or for the faint of heart, bubble drops or aquafaba. My childhood was in the Soviet Union and my grandma used to make uh, gogol mogol by beating raw eggs with sugar, so egg white doesn't scare me one bit. Now there are three approaches to shaking a sour cocktail. You can dry shake without the ice to whip the egg white and mix the ingredients, then open up the shaker, add ice 
and shake the second time. Its disadvantage is that uh, while the shaker is warm, its parts don't fit together very tightly and it can leak and splatter while you shake it. You can do a reverse dry shake where you first shake the cocktail with ice the usual way, then you strain the cocktail like this, discard the ice and shake it one more time, make a dry shake without ice. This way you get a little bit more foam. And the third approach which I use is to make one intense shake with ice. Close the shaker so that the two tins form a straight line on one side and shake. The main thing that the shake should be vigorous, then there will be enough foam. Especially if you dedicate the shake to this comment. Hit the shaker from one side, the gap should be turned away from you. But please, do this with your hand only and not hit the shaker against the bar or any other hard surface. Take a strainer, this one is called Hawthorne strainer. It has a spring that you can detach and uh, do a dry shake with it to get more foam. The strainer clamps into the shaker and it's also recommended to use a fine strainer to catch small pieces of ice or bits of lemon. And garnish with a dried lemon chip. Speaking of strainers, there's also a julep strainer. It doesn't have a spring and is usually used to strain cocktails that have been stirred in a mixing glass. By the way, if you want a video about stirring, tell me in the comments. Well, that's mostly it. Tell me in the comments if you want to know more. Other videos on how to make a home bar and how to become a bartender are in the dedicated playlist. Otherwise, subscribe to my Patreon, join the YouTube membership, drink responsibly and as always, do